welcome everybody. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. My name is Gail Whitlock and uh, welcome to all. Um, if you have not not signed in, if you would just please take a moment. I think Martha, you caught everyone on the way in, so we should be good there. Great. Uh, I want to start out by um, introducing our board members that are present with us this evening. I'm going to start out with Mr. Christopher Berry, who is serving as our nominating committee chair, so is sitting at the front table. And I also want to uh, introduce our board members that are out in the audience. Uh, we have Steve Northup there, and Dave Graham, Doug O'Brien, and Neil Nelson, I saw, who's here, here, yeah, right in the front, <laughs> right in front. Sorry about that. And I think that's all we have here this evening, is we have a few people out of town and doing some personal business. So uh, thanks, thanks again uh, for being here. Uh, the first order of business is uh, I'm going to uh, appoint the secretary of the meeting, and that is going to be Mr. Neil Nelson. Do you accept? Yes, I do. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, our next order of business is the uh, quorum verification. And Ron Pereira, our general manager, will verify quorum, citing class A, B, and C votes received. Yes, we do. We have quorum in all three classes. All right. Very good. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Uh, moving right along, our next order of business is the approval of minutes. There are minutes from the 2015 annual meeting that were out on the front table. And that is up for the membership to uh, put out for approval. So would someone like to make a motion to approve the 2015 annual minute meeting? Meeting minutes. I so move. So move. Okay. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. The minutes from last year's annual meeting uh, are approved. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Next, we're going to move to our nominating committee report. And I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Barry to come up for that. Thank you, Gail. I'd like to just uh, thank the two other members of the nominating committee this year. Uh, Mr. Doug O'Brien, who is the vice president of LLPRA, and Mr. David Fran, who is the board treasurer. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to introduce uh, the candidates that we have in this year's election. And when I call your name, would you just briefly stand, please? Mr. Jorge Delfin, Ms. Shelley Ferguson, Mr. Steve Northup, Mr. Scott O'Neill, Mr. Michael Stevens, Mr. Sophia Bitta, and Mr. Zoe Bitter. I should also uh, like to uh, express my appreciation at this time for the efforts of Ms. Marion Wood, who has done an outstanding job supporting the nominating committee, and also her colleagues in management. Thank you very much, Marion. I'm now going to ask if there are any further nominations from the floor for the 2016 election. There being none, the nominations are closed. If anybody has any ballots and you haven't voted yet and you would like to, please identify yourselves and these ballots will be collected. Any ballots? The voting is now closed for tabulation. I'm now going to call upon Ms. Gail Whitlock, President, for the President's report. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I always like to use this time to just spend a few minutes reflecting back on the previous year and take kind of stock of what we've accomplished and, and where we're going. And I think the annual meeting's a great time to do that. So I want to start out again by thanking you all for taking the time to be here. 
uh, the association is only as strong as its members, and so when you take an interest in being a part, whether it's just participating in a meeting or running for the board, it makes a big difference to the community. So thanks for taking the time to be here. Uh, I also want to thank each of the board members for their service. Uh, Janet Foote and Ron Yoho are, are not running for re-election, and even though they're not here tonight, I did want to recognize them. Uh, Ron Yoho served on the board since 2007, and Janet Foote since 2010, and we'll be giving them a proper farewell dinner later on, uh, but did want to recognize their years of service on the board. They've uh, been important members. And thank our current board members for all their work. We have accomplished a lot over this past year and spent a good bit of time on it. And so thank you very much uh, to all of you for what you've done. We really appreciate your service. Uh, of course, want to take time to acknowledge the LRPRA staff and directors that are here with us this evening. And uh, Mr. Berry recognized Miriam Wood for her work and putting this meeting together and running the election process. And I want to follow up with that also. Um, you work hard all year round, and I know this year, this uh, night in particular, is a, is a good bit of work. So thank you for that. I uh, also have Martha Nelson from the Covenants Department who keeps Lake Ridge looking good and processes lots of requests. So thank you for all you've done this year as well. Uh, we also have Laura Krauss, who's the Director of Recreation with us here this evening, and uh, Brody Freer from the Facilities Department, who's just gotten over the snowstorm, or maybe you haven't gotten over the snowstorm, but <laughs> thank, thank you for all your good work for, with that. We also have Mike Younger, who is Director of IT and does uh, in the Finance Department as well. And I always want to make sure I call out and say thank you to our legal counsel, Pietro Gianni, who's one of the top community association attorneys, not just in the DC metro area, but in the nation. So thank you very much for being here, Pia. We appreciate all your good guidance and counsel. Lake Ridge has had an excellent year, and I'd like to take a moment just to acknowledge some of the successes. And I want to start out with the Deer Management Program. While we acknowledge that there will always be a wide range of thoughts and opinions on the program, a substantial majority of the members advocated strongly for this program, and after town hall meetings, special board meetings, and fireside chats, the program kicked off in the fall of last year. I want to thank committee co-chair Neil Nelson and committee member Nick Duramski, and most particularly committee uh, Co-Chair John Mayer, who has worked and continues to work tirelessly to make sure the program is effective and safe. If you ever have any questions or concerns about the program, John will be happy to sit down with you to make sure you have all the facts and information that you need. Lake Ridge also received a great amount of support from Kevin Rose of the Virginia Department of Games and Inland Fisheries. And the program was really all hands on deck for Lake Ridge. So again, I want to acknowledge the efforts of the LRPRA team, Ron Pereira, Mark Brooks, and Brody Freer for all the additional work that they did on putting that program together. While not everyone finds financial statements exciting, I do want to report again that our member's unappropriated equity account is back in the black, which means we are positive in our equity account, and it had been negative since 2002. So we made great financial progress, and that's important as homeowners that, that we're on firm financial foot footing. So that was uh, an important win for Lake Ridge. We also took good care of LRPRA property last year. The county trail continues to move forward, and a 10-year project updating every single tot lot that Lake Ridge has. How many is it, Brody? Tot lots? Uh, 12. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a lot of tot lots, so they have all been updated. Uh, there was also a total renovation of the Antietam tennis courts. 17? 17, uh, I should have asked you ahead of time. <laughs> it's a lot of top laws. They're a all lot. updated. <laughs> we also had a total renovation of the Antietam tennis courts and a multi-purpose court was installed, which has proven to be wildly popular. New slides at Canterbury Woods were put into action and we have new chairs, canopies, tables, picnic tables at several of the pools. And we also have ping pong and cornhole at Edgewood, so check that out if you haven't. Uh, also, if you haven't been to Who's Run, I suggest you go down there. It's uh, stunning views of the Occoquan, new grills, new picnic tables, and we are now in the process of working with PWC to have a tot lot installed there. So it'll be a lovely place to spend a spring afternoon when it, the weather is nice and warm, which it will be again soon. 
This beautiful facility was updated last year, and next year we plan to redo the Canterbury Woods Community Center. And then, of course, we all have the routine scheduled maintenance in, according, in accordance with the recommendations of our engineering reserve study. Up ahead, our beloved fantasy playground will need to be replaced in the next 10 years. And while we love our trees, the association has begun a buffer program to improve space where our, natu where our natural spaces have started to encroach upon homes. This is going to be a multi-year uh, project, could stretch out over the next 10 to 15 years. So, so stay tuned, we'll be keeping you informed about that program in the newsletters uh, in the future. In recreation, we welcomed Laura Krause as our new director, and she got right to work, been bringing some new clubs to the community, and also working with local merchants to start a discount program. And we have 17 members at last count, so you can show your, uh, what we used to refer to as a pool card, which we're now calling the membership card, for discounts at new <coughs> local businesses. And that information has been in the newsletter, and it's also on the website. Okay, very good. So uh, keep up with that so you can get your discounts. Uh, we also have a record number of kids playing with flag football and lots of our annual events. Doggy paddle, taste of Lake Ridge, yard sale, full preschool with a wait list. We also had a teary farewell for our beloved Miss Jean Hogue of Lake Ridge Institution and welcome Miss Deanna York as our new preschool director. And Laura is always open to new ideas, so if you have any interest, she'll help you form a club. Uh, members can now view their accounts and pay online, and progress has been made towards a more user-friendly and beautiful website. Leveraging technology to improve convenience to you and ease of doing business with the association is a focus for the upcoming year. So it's been quite a year for Lakeridge, and for me personally, a delight to serve alongside the talented and committed staff and my fellow board members and neighbors. And so uh, with that, I would like to turn it over. Uh, Ruth Anderson is on deck to speak next, but she is still doing her day job as the supervisor up at uh, the McCourt building. But we have a member from her office that's going to talk to us for a few minutes. And then if Ruth is able to come later, then she'll be able to um, finish up with that. So. Do you want to talk in there? Does it matter? Uh, you can talk wherever you're comfortable. If you just want to talk right there, then, yeah, that's, no then that's great. <clears throat> I wanted to apologize on his behalf. Um, they started the meeting at 2. She thought it would be over by now. It's not. Um, they're in closed session right now. She's hoping to get here towards the end of the meeting. Um, but my name is Alex Stanley. I work on Ruth's staff. I also worked on Mike May's staff. Um, the way we've broken down, the first thing she wanted us to talk about that she was planning on talking about was how the staff in our office is going to be working so we can reach out and you guys know who to reach out to. Um, we have obviously Ruth as our supervisor. We have Alyssa Souvenier, who was under Mike for seven years. She's going to be Ruth's senior uh, chief, chief of staff. Um, she's in charge of pretty much making sure that everything works, uh, making sure that we're all in communication with Ruth, that we're getting back in communication with you guys. Um, we have Chase Sawyer, who also worked under Mike May's staff. Um, he's dealing with transportation issues, um, businesses, economic development. Uh, so if you're having an issue with VDOT or with county transportation, feel free to call. Uh, we can put you in contact with him. I am mostly working on land use development, permitting, service authority, um, HOAs and civic associations. So if there's ever an issue, feel free to call me um, and I'll run down as quickly as possible. Our last person uh, who's the, the newest hire to the Occoquan District is a uh, gentleman by the name of Jacob Mosser. He is a uh, lifelong resident of um, the Occoquan District. He's been dealing with schools, um, check it <laughs> public safety, schools, tourism, um, social services. The most important part is that while we all have fields, we will help you. It doesn't, if the person's on the office, we'll help and take care of it. It's just more of a delineation so we have fields of expertise. But if that person's not in the office, we don't care, we'll take care of whatever concerns you guys have. We're not gonna wait for that person to get back in the office. So, um, but I just wanna give you that rundown. Um, second, uh, town halls. Um, I don't know if some of you guys have been following, we've already had two town halls. Um, as kind of more of an uh, emergency standpoint rather than a long-term scheduled one. Uh, we had a town hall over the um, unfortunate instance, instances at Woodbridge High School and a couple of other high schools in the area with the threats of violence. Um, that was incredibly well attended. Uh, 
I don't have an exact number, but I know it was over 100 people were, were at that um, meeting. Um, that, you know, we, we were able to get a good takeaway. Uh, we were able to work and make sure that we can get a better communication between police staff and school staff. And that's going to be an ongoing dialogue to make sure that instances like that are getting back out to the community as quickly as possible, because there were some substantial concerns raised with that process beforehand. Um, we just had one uh, this past um, weekend, February 6th, about snow removal. Um, we, had, we brought VI in, it was at the McCourt building. It was also very well attended, over 60 people were there. Um, talking about snow removal, we had county staff, we had uh, state staff, um, we had parks and recreation staff, just so we could, the, the goal is to get you guys in touch with anyone that can help you. And if you have any concerns or any suggestions that we can get them out to the people doing the work to make the process better for everyone and to really be a liaison for this community and for all the communities in the Aquaquan District. Um, that being said, those are the two we've already done. Like I said, those are more emergency style meetings when something big has come up and we need to get something turned right around. Um, we also, uh, similar to what Supervisor May did, have scheduled town hall meetings. We're gonna have six this year, or sorry, this season. Um, in the spring season, we're gonna have six. I have uh, a handout that you guys can pass them down. Um, that has the scheduled meetings and also um, on the back of it has all of our contact information. Um, hopefully that can get across. If there's not enough of them, we have a whole other stack in the back uh, right there. But uh, that has all of our contact information on it. So if you need to reach out to us, that's where you have information as well as uh, the, the town hall meetings that are going to be scheduled. Um, one of the big focuses of those town halls is going to be uh, the budget. Um, budget season's coming up, I believe. I don't have my dates exactly, um, but I believe the next board meeting is when the budget presentation is going to be happening. Um, and then from there, over the course of the next uh, two months, we'll be uh, finalizing the budget process and passing it. These, these meetings are designed so that you guys can come out and give your feedback on the budget, that you can talk to Supervisor Anderson about anything that concerns you and that we can you know, hopefully work with the community to, to provide the best budget possible for Prince Wayne County. Um, we do have a budget team. I unfortunately, because I'm not heading that up, do not have the exact details of that, but if you reach out to me, I can get you that information. Um, so I do apologize for that. I didn't realize I was gonna be speaking today. Uh, <laughs> but uh, like I said, if you, if you need that information, reach out to me or reach out to uh, Alyssa Souvenier, our Chief of Staff and um, she will be able to give information to you guys if you want to participate in, in kind of that budget team that's going to go through, you know, you're going to go through the whole budget piece by piece, and it's a very fun process to me. It might not be fun to you guys, um, but if you want to do it, feel free to contact us, and, and we will be glad to have you. Um, another thing that will be talked about uh, is uh, school site selection. Um, I imagine that many of you are familiar with the Chin Park site that was proposed. Um, our, our opinion on this one is this is a community decision and the community has spoken. And that's it. I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not going to support a project that the community is against. Um, we're not happy with the process of how this happened. Um, it was kind of forced on us. They, they put in the um, proposal the week after the election um, and obviously, the week after elections in November, Ruth's not sworn in until January. Um, so we did not have a easy time turning this around and, and, and really reaching out to the community, but you guys are very good about reaching out to us. And we do appreciate that. And, and we trust me, we have heard your, your voices and, and, and we stand with you all on this. Um, we plan on having, uh, in the future, working with the schools to involve the civic associations and the HOAs more. Um, we've gotten numerous complaints from civic associations and HOAs saying that they weren't, uh, they weren't consulted at all on this process. Um, so obviously, I mean, elementary schools specifically are very community-based, very community-driven, and we want to make sure that the communities are getting a say in these projects. Um, the, uh, just swoop down here, sorry. Um, Supervisor Anderson did want to stress that this is going to be a very difficult budget process. Um, there are substantial projects that are currently not, not funded, and we have to figure out a way to, to remedy that, whether that's funding them, hopefully, or, or other means, specifically PRTC. Um, 
the schools in general. So there are, uh, it's gonna be a difficult budget season and, and as much community support, or as much community input as possible would be very, very helpful. And um, like I said, if you wanted to join the budget committee, please contact Alyssa or myself and we will get you all the information that you need to know on that. Um, and if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them um, to the best of my ability. Awesome. Oh. On the subject of the Chin Park and the yeah. school proposal, are, are they actually going to uh, withdraw the uh, request for the public facility review? I mean, that would be a solid indicator that it's off the We have asked. Uh, okay. uh, we have asked them to do that. We do not have the authority to make them do that. The school board does. Um, we have asked them, we've asked the school board to make them do that. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have the authority to force them to pull a PFR. Our, our ability would be to just vote it down when it comes up in front of us. Um, we would, in our opinion, the community has spoken, we've spoken at this point, it can't pass, so why put it up at all? You might as well pull it, but they have chosen at this time not to. Uh, so I don't, I, I apologize, I don't have a better answer for you than that. Um, but yeah. Does anybody else have any other? Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Thank Good you. Job. Thank you very much. All right. Next on the uh, order of business is the open forum, and that's a time where uh, you all, as members, have an opportunity to say whatever's on your mind regarding association business. Since this is a board meeting, not a board meeting, won't be taken up and acted upon, although we'll be keeping a record of any questions or comments and can get back to you either after the meeting or take it up at the next board meeting. Does, would anybody have anything for open forum? Go right ahead, please. Thank you. Um, my name's Gary Milkovich. I live on 13028 Smoketown Road. Uh, for sake of brevity, I actually uh, wrote mine, and unfortunately, it's in opposition to the Deer Management Program. Uh, and I'd like to read it into the minutes and then have the board consider it for their next meeting in March. Uh, my wife and I, Janice Milkovich, who is a teacher here at Antietam and also Lake Ridge Elementary School, and probably taught some of your children, I know she taught Martha's, uh, we'd like to, uh, we're writing and stating our opposition to the, to the Board of Directors as to the LRPRA Deer Management Program and to call for its repeal. As Lake Ridge residents since 1977, we've seen many changes to our community, from the sleepy bedroom community that was perceived to be too far away from Washington, D.C. to commute, to a vibrant, growing suburban hub. What attracted us to Lake Ridge was the, com was the community did not have the sprawl of a residential community within the uh, community in the Beltway. The open spaces and forests, as well as walking trails, wildlife, and waterfront activities has provided the residents with countless hours of outdoor and enjoyment. When we were informed that the board passed, uh, passed a program that would allow bow hunting in our residential community, we were shocked and appalled. We are not hunters, but respect a person's right to hunt in designated areas approved by the county or the state. The issue is that this program, which allows hunting beyond, behind a resident's home, is the only such program allowed by an HOA in a residential community in Northern Virginia. We find this fact very telling that other communities do not allow this type of deer hunting. We have, we have to believe that this is in deference to the safety of their residents. Having read the supporting literature of the deer management group and been approached by the president of the group, we are left unconvinced of the environmental goals of this program. As stated in the studies on the website, the killing of deer is only a small part of the plan to develop a vibrant ecosystem to reclaim forest and wildlife. This program's sole goal, in our opinion, is to provide a local area for recreational hunting for a group of Lake Ridge residents that find it inconvenient to travel 10 miles to an area that, is, that the state has created for recreational hunting near Quantico. The idea that killing zones allowed by LRPRA, which are close to areas where residents walk and enjoy wildlife, is repulsive and dangerous. All of the safety classes for hunters will not prevent a stray arrow to cross into a resident's property. Also, once Lake Ridge has been identified as an area in which open season for deer hunting is permitted, the lure of for poachers will be too hard to overcome. We know this for a fact. We have found embedded in our backyard a crossbow arrow near where we plant flowers and our dogs play daily. We must urge you, the members of the board, to reconsider and, re and repeal the, this program at the March 15th meeting before as a community we're faced with a potential tragedy that could have been prevented. Thank you for taking the time to put that together and share your thoughts. 
Uh, my name is Jim Dale. I live on Cobalt Lane, uh, and I just wanted to commend the facilities uh, folks who did a great job with the snow removal. I just couldn't say any more about it. I mean, every, the streets were like clean that you know the first day after the snow stopped. So. It was really great, really nice to have that. That is awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here to say thank you. I know they appreciate it, and they do work very hard to take care of things. The snow was a particular challenge, and I think our mechanic was working 24-7 for a little while, keeping everything up and running. I mean, VDOT was having trouble, so um, it, was a, it was quite a mountain. But yes, we, we have a, a dedicated group of folks working back there, so thanks for calling them out for that good deed. Appreciate that. Anyone else do something like yep. that? Uh, I guess uh, three things. I don't want to, with the, with the gentleman that expressed, uh, you know, reservations, I guess, with, with the deer hunting, a couple other things. Uh, look, uh, um, the uh, couple, couple things, I, I don't hunt here. I, I go way out to Dauburn to go hunt. But I have had experience with the Fairfax County doing the deer management thing. And you're and you're right. You're absolutely right with the with the thing about poachers. There, I mean, there's bad people everywhere, and the the threat of someone getting injured goes up with that. Now you got to balance that and, with the fact that you know the auto industry, uh, the auto insurance industry is losing about a uh, billion dollars a year through uh, uh, deer hitting cars, things like that. You know that that's something in the way, and the fact that. Uh, left unchecked because basically what we've done in this country is wiped out all the deer predators and uh, they destroy the forest. Uh, and that's what uh, Fairfax County had come to the conclusion of. That's why they, they have a program. Just things to consider. All right, that, that was my first thing. Second thing is that um, what I, uh, I've had an experience going through the uh, Architectural Committee recently. Uh, what I would ask because I never thought I would buy a half million dollar fixer upper, right? That wasn't in my plan in life. Um, with that said, you know, there are a lot of great things about the Lake Ridge Homeowner Association, but what I think is uh, a little bit of a disservice to people buying here is that, you know, you have a standard of what's acceptable. You have option A, you have option A1 and A2. I would like to see that on the website so when future people come into the community or wanting to think about purchasing a house here, they can make a fact-based decision like, you know, yes or no. I think that's only fair. Spending a half million dollars on a fixture upper and, you know, trying to upgrade your house, uh, to me it's not funny because I've, you know, I spent money on a, uh, uh, with a with a uh, architect to come up with a proposal and just to have it rejected you know and I've started since October right and the process is the way they are you know not not too keen on 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 the processes so that I think needs to be tightened up so that if I have a question I, I can get my question answered make it make a solid decision of either living here or bypass Lake Ridge right it's only fair mm -hmm. and uh, the question I have uh, the last question is what is the expected time to respond from the board giving an email to y'all what is what is reasonable a response back okay all right uh, we'll, we'll talk about that at the intermission which is coming up sure. okay uh, anything else for open forum? Anyone else like to participate? Okay. Well, welcome back. I'd like to uh, thank again all of the eight candidates for the this year's election. And it is uh, my pleasure uh, to announce the results of the 2016 election. The uh, complete results will be, by class of voters, will be published in the Lake Ridge Newsletter, the March issue, and you'll be able to see exactly how many votes the candidate got by the class of the vote. So, I'm pleased, as I said, to announce the three winners, and they are Mr. Steve Norbert, Ms. Shelley Ferguson, 
and Mr. Michael Stevens. Congratulations. Yes. And now I would like to uh, introduce Ms. Whitlock, who will announce the appointment of the 2017 nominating committee. Thank you very much, and congratulations to our winners. Look forward to working alongside you. Uh, the chair of the nominating committee next year will be Mr. Steve Northup. Will you accept? I do. Okay, very good. And our committee members will be uh, Wayne Mallard and Doug O'Brien. Okay, very good. And uh, before I turn it over to uh, Ms. Marion Wood for our prize drawings, I just wanted to uh, uh, make a note that when I was thanking and introducing our LIPRA members, I did forget to make a special mention of uh, our <laughs> general manager. Of the <laughs> Uh, so now we'll go uh, right into our prize drawings. And again, thank you all for being here, and congratulations. And thank you very much to all the candidates tonight.